What's a common mistake that pastors and parishes make when they are merging? To not dream. To think that they've seen somewhere else has to be the way that this unfolds. I really do believe that things are really broken and we just keep doing what we did before and we just keep expecting different examples, uh, different results. I, I truly do believe we're like we're, we're trapped in insanity and we need to break out of it. So I think the ability to spend time in silence, to spend time in prayer, to ask God to say, God, we are, we are longing for something new and something different. Show us the way. On your website, on, on the parish's website, um, you know, it says, uh, at All Saints Parish, we are one. Um, I suspect when you first put that together, when you first come up with that, that was aspirational, right? Yeah. The, a, a desire for them to be one. Um, was there a moment where it crossed the line from being aspirational to being the reality? And and do you remember the moment? You know, were you talking to someone? Were you saying mass, eating fried chicken with the yeah. youth group? Like, what was that moment where you realized, okay, we are one? Yeah, so it was uh, Thanksgiving Day. And earlier that summer, in our local area, there's a, a circuit of 5K runs. It's six 5K runs, six Saturdays in a row. And they all support local high schools and ministries, but they're all kind of united together. And I had entered a few of the 5K runs and got to know some of my parishioners who were runners. And after one of the f runs, we were sitting around talking and I was saying, you know, I've been here for a few months now and it doesn't seem like we have a lot of poverty within our parish boundaries. I haven't encountered a lot of people coming to the parish office and we're more of a rural area. And what can we do to help? And they spoke with me about that there were two local food pantries and how the food pantries are practically being run by Catholics, but they weren't Catholic in name. And one of them said, what if we, what if we had a 5k on Thanksgiving day to support the local food pantries and thought about it, talked about it, prayed about it. And we said, yes. And so that first year we founded what now is known as the Gobble Wobble, uh, which is the largest 5k uh, in Dearborn County. It's the fourth largest 5k on Thanksgiving day in the state of Indiana. Uh, and it raises well over $50,000 on Thanksgiving day for two local food pantries. And I remember walking across the street on that Thanksgiving day. And one of our parishioners walked up to me and she said, father, Thanks for creating the first All Saints event. Mm. And up until that point, we had done, I mean, it had been March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, November. It was a lot of months. But this was really the first unique event that had never existed before, that was completely brand new, that everyone had bought into and everyone was there for. And that's what I was like, we are one like it's happened. We're no longer just doing things we used to do. We're now doing something new. And the impact is beautiful. Yeah. If you could go back the eight years and you had to do it all over again, what would you do differently? I'd probably be even more bold. I think so often fear comes in thoughts of what others are going to think or say. Yeah. If a priest called you up today and said, listen, my bishop called me last night, has asked me to merge two parishes 
little three parishes, whatever it is, uh, what advice would you have for that priest? Get your butt to the Adoration Chapel as soon as possible. Uh, I'm, uh, that's exactly what I would say. Like, you need to be living it. You need to be living it. Because otherwise it's all just numbers and people and strategies and techniques and you have to be the saint that these people have been praying for. In every parish, there is a group of people I have found that are always praying for renewal and they're praying for priests and they're praying for their next priest. <laughs> and I don't know a parish that doesn't want to be dynamic. Mm. And a lot of that has to do with dad, has to do with the priest, has to do with the father. And everyone wants to belong to a dynamic parish. They do. There's no one out there who says, well, I don't want to belong to a dynamic parish. 